part of what it stipulates, it, it speaks to um, clarifying, um, rather requiring states to adopt a child rights-based approach to environmental protection. Um, it also clarifies what that means, which is the full consider that full consideration must be given to the impact of environmental harm, including climate change on children's rights. And in so doing, sufficient consideration must be, must be given to the multiple barriers faced by children in disadvantaged situations. Um, and so, yeah, we delve quite deeply into that. Uh, the general comment also speaks to what state obligations are in relation to education, um, in relation to um, healthcare, um, and interestingly, um, the right, well, future generations as well, the interests of future generations as well. Uh, we also then go into uh, impact of climate change on vulnerable groups and systems. Um, key amongst those, of course, is the grouping of children. Um, when it comes to children, we know that from a health perspective, um, children are like, physiologically uh, more vulnerable to the direct effects of climate change. And so we know that, you know, children are, so it's the, the, the direct effects of climate change because of their physiological um, vulnerability. Um, and we also know that children also vulnerable to um, psychological stress as a result of, of climate change. And so we explore that um, in, in, in the report. We speak to basic education as well um, and the direct impacts um, of climate change on basic education, going into um, the damage to infrastructure due to extreme weather events. Um, as I think, Pearl, you were mentioning a little earlier about the devastation that uh, 2021 case at end floods caused to um, education system in Guadalupe Natal. Um, and even more recently, of course, there was those tornadoes, which is, I think, a new thing, at least for me, um, which devastated um, parts of KZN floods in the Eastern Cape, and I believe the Western Cape as well. Um, and among um, the infrastructure that was damaged was schools. Um, I read a report that said about 60 schools had been had been damaged um, by in, in the past two weeks um, from that extreme weather event. And so these extreme weather events are going to become more um, prominent um, as time goes on. Um, we speak to that in relation to what the IPCC has said um, about what we are to expect in terms of um, climate change in the region. Um, so it's a direct, it's a damage to, to education infrastructure and we have quite dilapidated infrastructure um, in schools across the country, which are more vulnerable um, to the effects of climate change, to the impact of climate change rather. Um, and so part of what we speak about there is in, in the report is the fact that fixing schools, complying with the norms and standards um, already as a start um, creates more resilient um, infrastructure, school infrastructure. 